All right, so in this video, um, for my 176 students, I'm going to explain the Mad Libs project. So what you might want to do is in week three is click on this link to try playing Mad Libs, just to get an idea if you don't know how it works. So what that will do is that will take you to this link, um, and then you can choose one of these stories. So like for example, if I choose this dragon story, it will bring up this and then you type in these values. I've already pre-typed this so that's why this is in there. Just trying to save some time in the video. But it's like for color I just enter a color and then superlative I choose prettiest and adjective smelly. So I typed these in. And then what happens is when you click go mad it will generate a story using these values that the user entered. Now this particular tool will actually generate a random word so like it'll give you something random, which is a lot easier. But I click Go Mad and it will create the story. The magenta dragon is the prettiest dragon of all. It has smelly ears and a left pinky shaped like a tree. It loves to eat black widow spider. And so it generates the story for me, which is kind of cool. So that's kind of what you're doing. So if you look at the code that's provided for chapter two, um, some things you may want to look at is word story, um, and then there's three files. There's an HTML, there's a JavaScript file, JS, and then there's a CS file. So I'm not really that concerned about CSS, the CSS file. But what I am concerned about is the HTML and the JavaScript file. So let's take a quick look at the HTML file and see what it is all about. So you'll see that in here, you essentially have a form that the user is asked to fill out. So we display some kind of a, a label to basically help the user identify what the heck they're typing in to each input. So like for the first input, they're supposedly entering a boy's name. And that is stored in an ID called TXT boy. Likewise, the next field is a girl's name, which is we're going to type in this input, this text type input, and that's going to be stored in an ID called TXT girl. And so on. There's geological feature, formation, a verb, container, liquids, etc. And then down at the button, there should down at the bottom, excuse me, there is a button that when the user clicks this button, it's going to look for a function called tell story. Where the heck is tell story? Because we have no code up here, but we do have a link to a source source file called word story js. Where's that? Inside our folder there is a file called wordstory.js. So I'm going to open that up and this contains all of our JavaScript code. So notice that what happens here at the very top we have a boatload of variables. These variables, these top variables, will gather the information from the form. So like for example this variable is going to get information from the HTML file it's going to it's going to link it to the ID called txt boy. So this variable is essentially establishing a connection back to this ID right here. And then later on we create a variable called boy which is going to retrieve the value from txt boy. So this txt dot value, txt boy dot value, that is going to retrieve what the user typed in for the boy's name, and it's going to store it in a variable called boy, B O I. And then we have the same thing, so like this text girl, these two things are kind of connected, and this is going to store what the user typed in for a girl's name and girl. And then geological formation is going to be stored in geol, and then the verb. So Ultimately, for JavaScript's purposes, these are the variables we're really concerned about for most of what we're doing here. And we're going to use that in one variable called story. So this variable called story is actually created in these lines of code. So we're creating our Mad Lib story here. We start the story out with what is stored in the variable boy. So if the user types in Charlie or whatever the boy's name is, this is going to print back, it's going to generate a string value, whatever the user typed in there. 
and then we're going to build our output. We're essentially building a big, long string. We're going to concatenate. That's what this plus symbol does. We're going to build. That's what concatenate does. It means um, continue your output or add to your output. What is inside these quotation marks? Space and and a space. And then we're going to con continue or concatenate our output with what is stored in the variable girl. And then we're going to concatenate our output with a space went space up space the space. And then we finish that line of code. But wait, there's more down here. Story is going to plus equals. This means take what's in story at this point, add to it all this stuff, and put that back in story. So plus equals means look at what's in the variable at that moment, add to it what's on the right, and put all that stuff back in source. This just basically continues to build our story with what is stored in geol. And then we're going to concatenate space to space, concatenate what's in verb, and so on. So when we get down all the way down the bottom, we will have a complete story. And what do we do with story? We're going to look at what's in story and we're going to assign it to output.innerHTML. What the heck is that? Well up here at the top we have a variable called output which is connected to an ID in the HTML file called output. Where the heck is there an ID in the HTML file called output? Here it is. Way down at the bottom there is a div as an ID called output. So this says grab what's in story and write it, write that HTML and, us, and put that in the ID called output. So this will basically write this back to the HTML file underneath our form. So when we run this in the browser, when we pull it up, it looks like that. And then when we fill out the story and we click tell the story, which I, I had already pre filled that out. When we fill out these forms and we click tell the story, it'll build all of that. It'll build the story. So what I'm asking that you do is create something very similar to this. Do not just regurgitate word story, but you should come up with your own story up with your own story and your own values and generate a Mad Libs kind of story. It can be something funny, it can be something that you have seen before in a movie scene, you can do a knock-knock joke. So I want you to be creative, have fun with this. If you look back at the criteria for this, what am I asking you to do is you have to have at least eight different types of input. You must use a JavaScript file to write back the story. You must have a form to handle user input. Don't use prompt. Um, you should have appropriate labels. A label is essentially this is a label. Make sure you have appropriate labels. You want to do that anyway. Um, you have to have a button to generate the stories. It's basically the same thing like word story. Now this, I'm going to take this out. It says external style sheet. You can do styling. I'm not that concerned about styling. Um, you must have an external JavaScript file and that's because it's going to be easier for you to see all the JavaScript code. And again, I'm not as concerned about styling. I am concerned about HTML and JavaScript. And then you should have block comments. What's block comments? In HTML, block comments look like this with an exclamation point dash dash. You should have your name, date, file, file name, it should be file name, and then what the file does. And then it's dash dash right angle bracket. So this is how you do comments in HTML, and then you're going to have a JavaScript file. Same kind of deal of what is going to be in your comments, but in JavaScript, the way you do comments at the top is with a forward slash asterisk, or forward slash star, and then you end with asterisk forward slash. So same content in comments. This is just the best practice in programming. So that's pretty much what I'm looking for. Make sure that you put all of this in a folder, in a folder called project-1. You should zip the folder and submit the folder. How do you zip the folder? I'll show you. So here's a folder I have called chapter 2. Yours would be called project-1. 
And if you're in Windows, Mac might be a little different. If you're in Windows, you can right-click the folder, and you can go to Send to Compressed Zip Folder, and that will create a zip folder. And that's what you submit to me. The reason why I'm asking you to do that is that way all your stuff is nicely packaged together in the same location. If you have questions, email me. Um, but that is still due April 2nd. You have to submit it to Blackboard. Do not email this to me. You're going to submit it to Blackboard. You're going to go in here, browse your computer for your zip folder, and then submit it. If you have questions, email me. Have a good break. Um, just be ready to work when we come back on April 3rd. Make sure you submit these assignments by April 2nd.